A man picks up a stone and throws it. It hit the tiger directly on the buttocks. The tiger got up and walked towards the man. They say you can't touch a tiger's bottom. But the man didn't know what to do. Turned around and picked up another stone. And smashes it directly on the tiger's head. This time, the tiger is enraged. A woman passing by said something to stop it. But the man was not impressed. Then he went to the toilet. When he heard a horrible scream from outside, he hurriedly pulled up his trousers and went out. By now the zoo was in chaos. The visitors were running for their lives. The man looked confused. He didn't know what was going on. Suddenly a chill ran down his spine. The man was frozen in place. He slowly turned around. Looking back, the tiger that he had smashed rushed out of the park. The man was too scared to move. He took out his mobile phone and called for help. He says the tiger is staring at him. It looked like it was sizing up its prey. The tiger seemed to recognize the man. He couldn't care less. He just hangs up the phone. He ran away. The tiger is hot on his heels. The man is still agile. In the nick of time, he climbs over the fence. He escapes for the moment. But he has forgotten that tigers are felines. This kind of fence won't stop him. On receiving the call, the rescue team arrived at the scene shortly afterwards. The keeper's arm had been scratched by the tiger. He was going to try to tame it. But found that the tiger seemed to have been provoked by something. He also said the tiger didn't want to kill him. Otherwise, he would have lost his life. On the other side, the man was hiding in a corner, making a distress call. Turning around to see, the tiger was leering at him. Then the man's screams came over the phone. By the time the rescue team arrived, the man had already been eaten by the tiger. As the anesthetic gun was fired, the tragedy was finally over. Before the team had a chance to rest, another accident occurred. Boy falls into barn by accident. Loose grains made him fall deeper and deeper. A companion rushed to call for help. The rescue team soon arrived at the scene. The barn was found to be about 20 meters high. They immediately set up a ladder. They climbed to the top of the barn and told the boy to stay calm, not to panic, to avoid sinking deeper, to prevent sinking. The team, placing wooden planks on top of the grain to increase the contact area. A life belt was placed on the boy to secure his body. Then iron plates were inserted around him to enclose him. Then the suction device was activated. The grains were removed from the ring little by little to reduce the pressure of the grain on the boy. Everything was going very well. Just as the boy was about to be rescued, a female team member's rope suddenly broke. The lower half of her body sank instantly. She calmly opened her arms. Her whole body remains relaxed, but she was still sinking deeper and deeper. Luckily, her teammates held on to her, but a vortex of air pockets had formed below her. He can't pull her in. In the nick of time, the captain orders a backup plan. Get the cutter out, to cut through the iron wall outside the barn. At the same time, the team told the boy, to release the life buoy as he sinks, and take a deep breath. Soon the outer wall of the barn is cut open. The team told the boy to breathe in quickly. The tons of grain poured out. The three men were also rescued. Fortunately, none of them were in a life-threatening condition. Before the team had a chance to rest, another accident occurred. This mechanic slipped on the bottom of his foot, sitting on his butt on the inflatable pump. Seeing the guy's face in ecstasy, a large amount of gas entered his body through the pipe. His companion immediately called for help. When the rescue team arrived at the scene, found the boy had been turned into an inflatable doll. His body was swollen and he was confused. Rescuers carefully laid him down on the ground. After examination by the team doctor, it was found that the gas had filled his body. The organs in the chest cavity were severely compressed. The heart was unable to beat and the blood supply was inadequate. The lungs could not expand and breathing was difficult. The team gave him a shot that felt like it was stuck in a stone. He couldn't get it in at all. And because of the high air pressure in his body, the oxygen tube could not deliver oxygen. At the same time, the air pressure was so strong that the boy's organs began to fail. In an emergency, the captain had a brainstorm. If we can inflate him, we could also deflate him. So the captain decided to perform a chest decompression. The team immediately took out the syringe, just as he was about to do it. A little further down. No. We need the middle of the second rib. Between the second rib and the midclavicular line. But near the fifth rib is more appropriate. There's less chance of damaging the organ. And that's it. The needle is successfully inserted into the chest cavity. It's like deflating a balloon. With a loud deflation sound, the air pressure in the man's chest cavity gradually decreases. His breathing slowly returned to normal. Just as the rescue team was about to take the boy to the car. This is the end of the film.